New York once possessed one of the most vibrant estuarine ecosystems in the United States. But over time, more than 27 billion gallons of untreated wastewater silently poured in every year, turning waters once rich with fish and shrimp into a near-dead zone. In 2014, when many believed New York Harbor was beyond saving, a small group of students and scientists did something that seemed almost insane. They released millions of young oysters into the water. And astonishingly, 10 years later, over 120 million oysters are now coming back to life in what was once considered a dead zone. But the story is far from simple. For nearly a decade, the very waters themselves repeatedly pushed back. So why oysters? What really happened beneath the surface of New York Harbor? Today, let's join Terran Works to uncover the truth behind this ecological gamble. Have you ever been to New York? When people think of New York, what often comes to mind are towering skyscrapers, the bright lights of Times Square, or the hurried crowds rushing through busy streets. The city is known as a global financial hub, a place that never sleeps, with a per capita income of around $90,000 per year, among the highest in the US. But few know that beneath those dazzling lights, New York was once built upon an ancient ecosystem where massive oyster reefs once covered nearly the entire harbor, quietly shaping the coastline for hundreds of years. By the late 1800s, New York was even dubbed the oyster capital of the world. Long before steel bridges spanned the rivers and concrete lined the shores, the waters around Manhattan were among the largest biological fields on the East Coast. Over 200,000 acres of natural oyster reefs stretched throughout New York Harbor, forming living walls beneath the surface, a thriving habitat for fish, seabirds, and countless other creatures. The native oyster species Crassostria virginica wasn't just a food source, it was a massive natural water filtration system, cleaning millions of gallons of water each day and helping keep the ecosystem in balance. Layer upon layer of oyster shells, built up over generations, were even used to expand the shoreline and lay the very foundation of the city rising above. For centuries, people living by the harbor didn't see oysters as a delicacy, but as a part of everyday life. But as the city grew, the hunger for expansion began to change everything. All prosperity has its limits, and New York was no exception. When the city's population exploded in the late 19th century, oysters went from being a common food to becoming the center of a booming industry. Harvesting boats scraped entire reefs flat, pulling in millions of oysters every week to meet the ever-growing demand. But the fatal blow didn't come from the ocean floor. It came from the surface. Wastewater pipes built to serve the swelling population began dumping raw sewage directly into the harbor. The currents that once carried oyster larvae throughout the bay became toxic flows. And the oysters, creatures that live and feed through those very waters, began to die off en masse. Disease spread rapidly, oxygen levels plummeted, and the entire ecosystem started collapsing in a domino effect. By 1927, the last commercial oyster beds in New York Harbor were forced to shut down. Authorities declared oysters no longer safe to eat. From being the oyster capital of the world, New York watched its underwater empire vanish in barely a generation. When the oyster reefs disappeared, New York didn't just lose an industry. The city lost its living shield that once protected the coastline. The waters turned black, the fish vanished, and the harbor came to be seen as an open sewer. For years, no one thought of saving it, because everyone believed that battle had already been lost. But then in 1972, something had to change. Amid growing pressure from environmental crises across the United States, the government passed the Clean Water Act, the first law to ban the direct discharge of untreated sewage into rivers and oceans. For New York, the act didn't create a miracle overnight. It did just one thing, but it was vital. It stopped the flow of destruction. Wastewater treatment systems began to be built, 
old sewers were replaced, and for the first time in decades, the volume of raw sewage flowing directly into the harbor dropped by about 70 to 80 percent. Meanwhile, levels of harmful bacteria decreased by nearly 90 percent compared to the 1970s. It would take decades, but this marked the first moment that New York Harbor had a real chance to survive. And it was on that fragile foundation that in 2014, a seemingly crazy gamble truly began. Not by a corporation, not by the government, but by students from the New York Harbor School, located on Governor's Island, together with scientists who decided to release millions of young oysters back into New York Harbor. A decision that led many to simply shake their heads. They'll all die. But something no one expected happened. Each oyster has the ability to filter dozens of gallons of water per day. And when millions of them work together, they turn what was once considered dead water into a massive living filtration system. Are you curious how they did it? It didn't start on the seafloor. It started in the trash bins of New York's finest restaurants. Each day, discarded bags of oyster shells were collected, cleaned, and left to cure outdoors for months, long enough for sun and rain to wash away all traces of bacteria. These shells were then transported to makeshift hatcheries, where tiny oyster larvae were raised in artificial seawater tanks. When the time was right, thousands of larvae were simultaneously seeded onto layers of old shells, because oysters can only grow if they have something to attach to. Each tray of seeded oysters was placed into special steel and mesh structures, then carried by students onto barges and carefully lowered to the harbor floor. Every site was marked, filmed, and continuously monitored to ensure the oysters could survive and grow. At first, no one dared to believe in the results. The initial artificial oyster reefs sank beneath murky waters, barely visible to the naked eye. But the important thing was, they didn't disappear. After just a few months, the young oysters began surviving against all expectations. They clung tightly to the old shells, grew day by day, and began doing exactly what nature designed them to do millions of years ago. Filter water, trap sediment, and calm the currents. Then something remarkable happened. The first creatures began to return. From seaweed and tiny crustaceans to juvenile fish, life started to appear around the reef structures. Areas that had once been barren slowly turned into new sanctuaries for marine life. Students and scientists tracked every change using underwater cameras and field notebooks. Every surviving oyster, every species that came back was noted. Because for the first time in nearly a century, New York Harbor was showing signs of breathing again from the bottom up. But things weren't that easy. Just as the first signs of life returned, new challenges emerged. Beneath the calm surface, New York Harbor still carried deep, unhealed wounds. Every heavy rain triggered the combined sewer overflow system, pipes that channel both stormwater and sewage, releasing untreated wastewater back into the harbor. Within hours, water quality could drastically deteriorate, pushing the fragile young oyster reefs into danger. Rising water temperatures due to climate change also became an invisible threat. Prolonged heat waves reduced oxygen levels, forcing oysters to operate at the edge of survival. Natural pathogens and waterborne parasites were a constant threat as well. A single harsh summer could wipe out an entire reef. And there's another truth. These oysters can't be harvested for food. Despite their growing numbers, the water still isn't clean enough to revive the harvesting industry. These reefs now exist not for profit, but as the last line of defense for the ecosystem. And you know, the difficulties weren't just underwater. They stirred up an ongoing debate within the scientific community itself. Many experts agree that oysters can filter water and stabilize sediments, but skepticism remains. Some argue that the idea of oysters filtering millions of gallons of water a day has been overly romanticized, that no reef, no matter how large, can stand against millions of gallons of sewage washing in after a single storm. Some have even called New York's oyster restoration efforts a green symbol more than a practical solution. 
But those debates don't dismiss the value of oyster reefs. They simply remind the city that placing all hope on one tiny species is far too fragile. And from that very skepticism, New York was forced to seek a second line of defense, one stronger, more enduring. Are you curious what that solution is? If oysters are the lungs helping to clean the water, then green infrastructure acts as the circulatory system of the entire city. Instead of letting rainwater rush straight into the sewers and overflow into the harbor, New York began building a massive stormwater absorption network right on the surface. Each bioswale along sidewalks functions like a natural buffer, capturing the rain that could otherwise overwhelm the sewer system. Green roofs atop high-rise buildings help retain moisture and reduce surface runoff, while deep underground, massive storage tanks can hold between 5 and 12 million gallons of stormwater, enough to buy time for treatment systems to catch up. All these measures aim toward a single goal, relieving pressure on the combined sewer overflow, CSO, system. The biggest reason untreated wastewater keeps flowing back into the harbor. Thanks to these changes, every rainstorm in New York is no longer a death sentence for young oyster reefs. The water is still dangerous, but less unpredictable, giving artificial reefs a real chance to survive and continue the work nature designed them to do. At the same time, scientists began changing their approach to oyster restoration. Instead of placing reefs in shallow, vulnerable waters, they started lowering them to greater depths, using modular structures that can be assembled or dismantled, helping oysters avoid extreme heat and sudden freshwater pulses. Hardier oyster strains, more heat and disease resistant, were selectively bred. The reefs are no longer just experiments, they've become part of the city's coastal defense strategy in the face of climate change. Oysters alone cannot save New York Harbor, but when combined with modern infrastructure, these reefs become a crucial link in a larger recovery system, where technology and nature, for the first time in decades, are finally on the same side. Today, New York Harbor is no longer the dead water it was in the last century, but it has never fully returned to its original purity. The water is still murky, the currents still carry the imprint of the massive city above, but life has quietly and resiliently returned. Beneath the seemingly calm waves, artificial oyster reefs are slowly taking root. Small fish have returned, crabs and crustaceans are finding shelter, and seaweed is growing on structures that had stood bare for decades. Shorelines once eroded are now protected by living walls, layers of oyster shells stacked naturally, piece by piece. And perhaps the most remarkable thing is this. No one calls it a miracle anymore. People now speak of it as a slow healing process. New York Harbor today is not perfect, but it is alive. Not as a grand symbol, but as proof that even the most forgotten waters can find their breath again. If humanity knows when to stop and when to start giving back. Today, even though the oyster reefs in New York Harbor are not allowed to be harvested, the city's oyster-based food culture continues to thrive, right in the heart of New York. Riverside restaurants in Brooklyn and Manhattan are always packed, serving raw oysters sourced from clean waters, garlic butter grilled oysters, and southern-style crispy fried oysters. These dishes not only preserve the familiar flavors of old New York, but also remind people that the sea is still present right beneath Turs. New York Harbor didn't come back to life through a miracle, but through thousands of patient hands and millions of small, persistent actions over decades. This journey shows that nature's recovery is not a straight line, but a series of challenges, missteps, and renewed attempts, each step bringing the ecosystem a little closer to life. We can't erase the past, but we can build a different future if we choose to change in time. And New York Harbor stands as proof that even waters once declared dead can be revived if humans learn to work with nature instead of against it. What do you think of this restoration effort? Leave a comment below. TerranWorks would love to hear your perspective.
Thank you for watching and see you in the next story.